Here at Greensboro Day School, we often celebrate athletic prowess on the courts and fields, artistic flair in this very building, and all the myriad of talents our students bring to our community daily. Today, we are honoring those students with high academic achievement. Just as our athletes, artists, and entertainers spend countless hours perfecting their skills and talents, these young people work to develop their intellectual potential. And so, today we are here to honor their excellence in academics with their induction into Greensboro Day School's Cum Laude Society chapter. Selection for induction is based on the academic performance as defined by grade point average and the number of advanced and AP courses that students take as well as an estimation of their intellectual engagement with the learning process. We take 10% of each year's junior class, the top 10%, and then follow that with the unassigned top 10% in the senior year for a total of 20% of a graduating class. That is what we can recognize as a maximum number. And so we will do that today, 10% of the juniors and 10% of the seniors. Before we introduce our student speakers today, the faculty on stage, I want to recognize as members of Greensboro Day School's Cum Laude chapter, they represent about 20% of the upper school faculty and they are comprised of members of Phi Beta Kappa, which is the Collegiate Honor Society after which Cum Laude was modeled. We also have some faculty members up here who are responsible for maintaining our Greensboro Day School chapter. I would like to introduce the first speaker, Mr. Matthew Aronson. Good afternoon. My name is Matt Aronson, and I would like to share with you some words from renowned neurosurgeon, Dr. Ben Carson, who stated, in the process of reading books, I read about a lot of people, successful people, and I came to realize that the person that has the most to do with what happens to you is you. It's not some, outside, it's not some other outside influence. It's you and the choices that you make. And once I came to realize that, nothing bothered me anymore because I knew that I could change it. Dr. Ben Carson overcame a difficult and broken past to attend Yale University, graduate from medical school, and ultimately become head of pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins Children's Center. In addition to his medical career, he is a popular motivational speaker who tells his own story to encourage young people to make the most of their abilities. This is what we students here at Greensboro Day School are privileged to have the opportunity to do to make the most of our abilities. Greensboro Day School offers the advantage of helpful and supportive teachers who are always there for students. This, in combination with plentiful resources, give you the information and guidance that is necessary to do well. But you have the ultimate control as to the level of success and achievement, to your readiness for certain situations, and to your true understanding. There is no secret to success, academically or otherwise. It is nothing more than hard work in testing yourself for possible challenges until you are, without a doubt, fully capable. This applies not only to school, but also to any aspect of life. For me and my teammates, this applies to sports and the practices that build winning habits. For others, it could apply to areas of interest such as drama, art, music, and many more. Everyone has the capability to achieve great things, and in the end, you are in control. I would like to leave you with some words of wisdom from basketball legend Michael Jordan that tie in with Dr. Carson's philosophy. Some people want it to happen, some wish it would happen, others make it happen. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Lane Zara. 
In my speech today, I'm not going to confuse you with a complicated message, nor am I going to attempt to completely change the course of your life with my moving words. The message I'm trying to impart on you today is pure and simple. Be intentional in high school and set goals for what you want to achieve in order to ensure that you can graduate and move past your GDS days with no regrets. In other words, create your own bucket list for high school. Now, as your mind starts to race with thoughts of what would be on your version of the GDS bucket list, I want to stress that each of you will have unique items on that list, and that's fine. It's your life and your goals. What's important in my view is that you have a list. Try to avoid sitting back and let the waves and letting the waves of life simply crash over you. For example, some of my goals for high school were and are try my hardest in all my classes, to not embarrass myself participating in GDS athletics, i.e., don't belly flop the block off the block at a GDS swim meet, make great friends that will be hard to leave behind, stop Miss Morris on a calculus question pull an awesome senior prank, and most importantly, have a great high school experience. I'm not saying that all of you today should make a list identical or even similar to mine. I just suggest that, you, that everyone set goals for yourself, both academically and socially, so that later in life you'll be able to look back on your GDS days with happiness and without regrets. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Alex Brockton. Of all the presentations, projects, and papers which I've completed in my 13 years of GDS, the one which has had the greatest impact on me has been the third grade Native American project. It was something I had been looking forward to all year. I was even more excited to be assigned the Pacific Northwest, which I had my sights set upon. But once I started to research the natives of the Northwest, I came up with three different ideas for my project. A model of a fish camp I had seen in a book, a poster of the various foods eaten by area tribes, and a totem pole to be carved out by my dad and me. Unfortunately, the only one of those projects I did any real work on was the poster, as I let my dad take the lead on the fish camp, which was to be built out of dozens of dowels, each needing individual sanding and gluing, which left me the important job of buying blue saran wrap and buying model people to set up around it. The totem pole was never even started on, and when I presented my project to Ms. Edwards and the, and the class, I was asked how much I had done myself, eventually admitting that most of the hard work was done by my parents, coming home with an embarrassing note suggesting that I do more work myself from then on. <laughs> because of this, I've been writing my own essays, building my own dioramas, <laughs> and making my own posters ever since, because I know I would rather overreach and fail on my own than rely on someone else to make a good grade. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Sophia Skirmerhorn. In order to not only make it through high school, but to really enjoy it, you have to be a lion cub. I know that sounds a little odd, but give me a minute. Hopefully it'll make sense. I don't think a day goes by that I don't hear somebody complaining about school. Listening to these criticisms, I used to wonder, why is it that I have never harbored this inherent dislike that so many of my peers share? In fact, for the most part, I really love school. Finally, I realized this difference is because I am a lion cub. I'm constantly on the prowl for what I am passionate about. And once I sight it, I stalk it, and finally, I pounce. In other words, I blaze my own trail in order to pursue my interests. I have made sure that for the most part, the classes I have taken and the activities I have participated in are things that I can truly say I enjoy. More importantly, I have never allowed any person, standard, or restriction to stand in my way. For example, even in middle school, I knew I wanted to pursue science. So despite the lack of precedent in Greensboro Day, I decided to double up both freshman and sophomore year in science and did not allow any custom or teacher who was originally skeptical to stand in my way. Because of this, I was able to spend more time in classes I enjoyed, such as AP Chemistry, and less time in areas about which I am not as enthused. Another example on a much smaller scale is my love of dragons. 
Although it isn't an average interest, I haven't let that deter me from doing things like spending endless hours making fake wings, a snout, and a tail, all in order to dress up with a friend of mine who wishes to remain anonymous to attend a singer book premiere. The point is, find what you're passionate about, or at least something you enjoy. After that, find a way to make it work. Sometimes this isn't easy. Sometimes it means challenging authority, a lot of logistics, or a little bit of persuasion. But if there's anything that I've learned from my lioness of a mother, is that there is always, and I mean always, a way to make it work. <clears throat> Trust me on that. Don't sacrifice your happiness and your high school experience because what you want doesn't immediately fall into your lap. So crouch low, prepare to spring, and let out a roar. Thank you. Thank you for having me at today's cum laude induction. Consider my confession a warning to you. GDS is an addictive place. It's gotten to the point where I'm forced to attend TCA meetings. Tech Crew Anonymous, that is. For days I've rehearsed what I'm going to say in that first meeting. Hello, my name is Nicholas Gahn, and I am a techie. My addiction began on a small scale the occasional set construction or cabling patch, but it soon spiraled out of control into the full intoxicating range of stagecraft. Hanging library speakers, dangling precariously over catwalks, hiding behind curtains, with super trooper funnel spots, controlling lights, <laughs> and sound. Yes, I am addicted to the sheer joy and exhilaration of being able to create an illusion that is shared with hundreds of strangers. I am a cheerful addict of the Corsini March, and I do not want to be cured. I always remain a man in black. Look out. You may be learning too. It could be anything. A harmless sounding world history extra credit option, the temptation of a bed of nails. The call of the wild to gather leaves. <laughs> a romantic French poem that speaks through you. An inviting sound in the drama edition. The way the tennis racket lies just right in your hand. Or the public passing the Wesleyan Gold. You name it. It could be anything. So watch out. This is an addictive place. Thank you.